So in this video, we're going to be talking about marine charts, specifically charts that have been authored by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. So this is a US-based organization that's responsible for maritime charts. Now, if you head over to this website, charts.noaa.gov, interactive catalog, you will be able to see all the data that you can download for free. This data can come either as a PDF or as an electronic chart, which arrives in a format known as S57. If we have a look at the PDF, let's say we want a map. Let's say we want a map of Cuba. We can grab one of these PDFs. This kind of shows you the extent of detail that the NOAA put in their maps and which you can access. Now, you might be really happy just with this PDF as it is, but you might want to bring some of this kind of data into QGIS. So how do you do that? Well, if you go back to the chart locator and you switch tabs to the electronic charts and we select a similar area, it won't be exactly the same, we can see that there's an available product, the ENC. If we grab that, click on that, it'll take us to this new window and then right down here on the bottom left-hand side, okay to download, we can download the data. If we pop this open, I'm going to, you can see I've already done this once already. I'm just gonna do it again. We're going to extract it. I'm going to extract it actually directly into my desktop. Let's go have a look at it on my desktop. Here it is, ENC root. If we pop it open, and then we find the one file that's got the extension .000. And you can see over here that it's actually much bigger than all the other files that share the folder with it. Right, this one's about three megabytes. All the others are much smaller. So let's see what happens if we pop open QGIS and drag this file into QGIS. Create a new project, new, and let's just see what happens when we drag it in. Here we go, drag it in. It's gonna say, hey, here's a bunch of layers I've noticed in here. We can select them all, okay, bring them in. And this is what we end up with. So you'll notice that it's a, a vector style of data that's been brought in and it's otherwise completely unsorted, right? I mean, we can tell that there are sort of different classes of data. Uh, we could probably guess what some of these features are, but we would need to consult the documentation that comes with this data in order to understand what it is. Now, there's quite a lot of classes of data. There's probably about 70 or 75. So if we don't want to necessarily go picking through all of this data in order to recreate let's say the PDF that we are more familiar with, but we want to sort of maintain extra control over the appearance, which presumably is one reason why we're doing this in QGIS as opposed to just downloading a PDF. Then there is a slightly smarter way, a slightly more efficient way uh, of organizing this data, of stylizing it uh, in, in a slightly more automated way. And, it's slightly finicky to set up, but once you get it set up, you can apply it to any map that you then download from the NOAA or indeed any other maritime organization that publishes data in S57 format. So how are we going to do that? Well, here is a kind of seven step process, if you like. I didn't develop this. It's adapted from a process developed by Sig Territoire, they already have a YouTube video describing how to do their particular way. They've got this sort of English language blog, but then they've also got a French language video on YouTube. So in a sense, what I'm providing is the English language uh, YouTube contribution, but that's also uh, addresses a couple of errors or, or, or potential mistakes that one could make. So this is the, this is the process. We download a little program called FW Tools. We use that program, FW Tools, to convert the ENC data 
from its ENC form into individual shapefiles. We then download a QGIS project and we download a bunch of SVGs that can be used as part of a style. We save those SVGs where they need to. We save the QGIS project file where it needs to. We then change the QGIS project file so that it points towards those SVG files. And then we boot it all up and see if it works. So that's the overall process. It's a little bit finicky, but once you nail it, you can apply it. As I say, you can roll it out to any ENC data that you happen to get your hands on. And you're in a lot more control of that data because as we saw, it comes in otherwise quite unorganized. So let's just run through this process, beginning with downloading FW tools. If you head over to, to search for just a little cheeky Google search, FW tools, head over here. I'll put a link in the video description as well. Head directly over to download and then in all downloads, I, I just typically use the mirror site because that's the one that was working for me. Grab the FW tools exe, download that. I look at show in the folder. You can see I've done this once or twice already. Install the program, press close. Okay. And that's step one done. It's pretty easy, right? The second step is to use these tools to convert the ENC file into individual shape files so that they can then be styled. So we need to first on our uh, C drive, create a new folder. You can move this later on, but for the sake of simplicity, this is what we're gonna do. We're going to create a new folder and this is gonna be called ENC data. Okay, and then within that folder, we're gonna create a new folder, which is gonna be called translated. Okay, so let's go back. So using FW tools, we're gonna to convert the ENC file into individual shape files so they can be styled. So we, what, we've, what we've done basically is create a folder that's gonna be the output of this process. Now the second part is to actually boot up FW tools. So if I search in my start bar for FW tools shell, boot that up and it'll be this little kind of command prompt looking situation. Now the script that we want to throw into here is basically gonna be a script that finds our original ENC data, right? Which, which looks like this. It's gonna find that data and then it's gonna translated into a bunch of individual shape files, which are going to end up in this folder into our translated folder. So I'll show you the script. It's one I prepared earlier. This is the template, right? This is the template. OGR2, OGR, dash, skip failures, output, input. Now output and input you need to change to be the corresponding directories on your computer. So for me, output is gonna be this folder, translated, okay? So if I do right click just inside the folder, properties, I can see the file directory here. C, ENC data. Now make sure whenever you name, I would really suggest you use an underscore because the script won't work if you've got a space where a space shouldn't be. So, so this is gonna be the first part of our output. So let's just create a new line here. C colon backslash ENC data. And then we're gonna do one more backslash and it's going to, we're going to write translated because that's the name of the folder, the subfolder within this folder, yeah? So this is going to be our output. And for our input, that is just literally wherever we saved our ENC data, right? So I believe I put mine on my desktop. Uh, it looked like this, ENC underscore root. 
and it was in this subfolder and that's the file, right? This is the file that we dragged into QGIS. Okay, so we're going to right click on this guy, press properties, and here's the path directory. So I'm going to copy that back over to our notepad. And we want to specify the exact file as well, right? So we're going to copy the file name as well, copy. We're going to press backspace and we're going to press paste. Okay, so this is our output. This is the folder that we created in order to store our new shape files. And this is the input. This is the directory for our downloaded ENC file from the NOAA. Okay, so let's just put this all together. I'm going to copy this, paste. I'm going to copy this, paste it on output. I'm going to copy this, paste it on input. And this is the full script. OGR to OGR, space, dash, skip failures, space, the directory for our output and the directory for our input. So let's just take all of this, copy, head back over to FW Tools, press paste and press enter. And if you see a whole bunch of errors, you know you've done the right thing. If you have any, if you don't see that bunch of errors and instead you just have like a sort of one or two line response, then there's probably a problem with your formatting of the script. So just double, double check, otherwise do exactly what I did. Uh, the other way you can check, of course, that this worked is by going over to ENC data and having a look and translated. And here it is. These are all the shape files that have been generated from that single ENC file. Yeah. And you'll notice that they all have the same names as their corresponding layers in QGIS. And if you like, you could also stop at this point as well, right? You now have this single sort of monster of a file broken up into all of its constituent shape files. But if you want to apply a, a, a nice styling regime to this, which also filters through and reorganizes the layers, we need to complete the next few steps. So that's step one done, step two done. Step three is to download a QGIS project file that contains the style, plus we need to download a pack of SVGs that are needed for that style, okay? So to do that, we need to head over to our friends Sig Territoire. Again, a link for this I will put in the video description. And we're gonna scroll on down to this part of the blog where it says to download the file, click here. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. And if we open this up, unpack it, we can see inside, yes, okay, thank you. We're gonna extract this to the des desktop. And then if we go over to the desktop, we should be able to see a folder called QGIS underscore nautical, okay? Let's have a pop, have a look inside there. QGIS underscore nautical, and it contains two subfolders. The first one is called nautical, and these are our SVGs. These SVGs are gonna be used in the styling of our data, yeah? And then in the other subfolder, QGIS-S57, it's gonna be the QGS project file that was mentioned earlier. So, that's step three complete. Step four is to save the SVGs in the QGIS directory. So we need to now go to our program files on our C drive, program files, and we need to find where QGIS is installed. Now I have two QGIS installations on my, pro on my computer. I would suggest you do not do that. Try and keep only one QGIS on your computer at any given time, but this is the one I'm gonna be using, 3.10, double click on that. And then we're gonna double click on apps. 
and then QGIS-LTR. Now on your machine, it might just be QGIS. But if it's dash LTR, make a note of that because that will become important later. Double click on that. And then here we'll see SVG, yeah? Double click on that. And then in here, you will see the kind of standard stock SVGs. Uh, now you might notice I've already gone through this process already. That's why nautical is in there. But just imagine that there is no nautical. I will delete that to make things a bit easier. So we're going to go, first of all, to our desktop, to our QGIS nautical. And we're just literally going to copy this entire subfolder from what we just downloaded from SIG Territoire. And we're going to paste this into our SVG directory. Yeah, paste like that. Yep. So now these nautical SVGs live among all the stock SVGs of my QGIS program. Yep. So that's step four. Step five is to save the QGS in our translated folder. So let's go back over to system C to our ENC data to our translated folder. Remember, this is where we have saved our FW tools converted files. And we're going to drop our QGS from SIG Territoire into this directory. So we're going to, in our QGIS underscore nautical folder, we're going to open up QGIS S57. And we're going to copy this file. And we're going to jump back into translated and we're going to paste. So we're pasting the QGS file into the directory of our translated shapefiles. And that's step five. Step six is to edit the QGS with the correct file path. So we need to right click on our QGS and we need to open not with QGIS, which is what might be the default program as it should be to try and open this sort of file, but we're gonna open it with Notepad. If you don't see Notepad immediately, choose another app and then find Notepad, okay? open it up. And this, if you like, we're sort of popping under the hood of the QGS project file. Now, all we need to do here is perform a little search, which is for QGIS Brighton, because this was the version of QGIS that was used to make this project file. Now, if we were to open this project up immediately, it will be looking for a folder on my computer called QGIS Brighton, which doesn't exist because I don't have QGIS Brighton. I've got QGIS 3.10. So that means I need to change every instance of QGIS Brighton to QGIS 3.10. But in addition, I've noticed that if I look at QGIS Brighton and then it's got a subfolder called apps, and then it's got a subfolder called QGIS, right? Now, remember before when I went back to my program files and I looked into my QGIS 3.10, and I went into my apps, I had no QGIS folder. I only had QGIS-LTR. And what that means is that in addition to changing every instance of QGIS Brighton, I also need to change every instance of this QGIS to QGIS-LTR. We can do that all in one go by going File, Replace, and it will be QGIS Brighton slash app slash QGIS. We're going to copy that. And we're going to replace it with 
QGIS, QGIS 3.10 slash apps slash QGIS dash LTR. And then one more slash. Because that's the correct file path, right? That means when we boot up this QGIS file, it will be looking for a folder that does indeed exist. And all the way down, it will be able to find the SVGs that we want it to. So I'm just going to hit replace all. Obviously, on your computer, you might not have QGIS 3.10. You might have a different one, in which case you will have to edit this accordingly. But you must make sure that the file path is going to be correct all the way down. There might be other variations. You need to make sure that those variations are picked up. So now I'm going to press save. I'm going to quit out. So I'm going to navigate back to my system, to my ENC underscore data, into my translated folder, navigate to my little QGS file here, which we've now saved and updated with the correct file path. And if I open it with QGIS this time, okay, let's see what happens. Oh, got some layers which it can't find. That's okay because we don't necessarily need all of those layers. Let's keep them anyway. And if we right click, zoom to layer, here is our map data correctly styled with all of the SVG icons correctly applied. And you can also see the layers have been ordered in a way that makes cartographic sense. We don't have polygons representing bathymetric areas sitting on top of land polygons. We don't have lighthouse layers sitting below land polygons. Everything is nicely organized. Now, you might not necessarily like the exact styling of this, uh, of this map, but you'll be in a much stronger position to change that styling. Let's say, for example, I want to change the color of land, make it white, for example. I'm in a better position to do so. I don't need to go, you know, digging through, trying to work out exactly what everything is called. And that's it. That's the process. As you can see, it's a little bit involved, but that's about it. That's the entire process. And you can roll that out across any, any ENC data that you happen to come across, any ENC data that's saved in that S57 format, of course. So thanks very much. See you later.